in the name of Jesus. Where is that scripture that says, um, it talks about excellence. Um, when Paul and Priscilla came across Paul, they said, I'm, I'm sorry, when Priscilla and Aquila came across Paul. You ever read that? It says, we're going to show you a more excellent way. You know where that is? So I, I know it's in the book of Acts. Uh, uh, and I don't, I can't even tell you how to spell Aquila. A-Q. Huh? A-Q-U-I-L-L-A. A-Q-U-I-L-L-A. Okay, let's see if we could, no, that's not it. A-Q-U-I. A Q U I L L A. That didn't come up. Try one A L. Okay, now one L came up. Okay, let's look at this. It's in the book of Acts. And um, okay, turn to Acts chapter 18. Let's go there. And let's use that as a base for our scripture tonight. It says that he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Oh, wait a minute. I said verse 18, right? No, you mm -hmm. said chapter 18. Chapter 18. Right. Verse 26. And Paul, he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when Paul when Aquila and Priscilla had heard they took him unto them. Look how powerful that is. It said that when Paul was heard preaching that Aquila heard him and Priscilla heard him. And the Bible says that uh, listen to what it said. They took him unto them. In other words, they brought him close. Come on here. They brought him close. Uh, they saw his potential. I'm in Acts 18, 26. Say leadership. Leadership. Above, above and, beyond. and beyond. You have to be willing to go be above and beyond. Say leadership. Leadership. See, you don't want a babysitter that's going to halfway take care of your baby. Do you? No. Come on here now. You don't want a babysitter that take your baby out in the summertime and leave her in the car. And so here Paul and Priscilla, uh, I mean Aquila and Priscilla, Heard, and they took him unto them and expounded, declared unto him the way of God more perfectly. They began to explain some things to Paul that Paul didn't understand. They began to give him insight. They, they began to give him direction. He, he was preaching. Let's look at everything that he was preaching. Look at verse 24. Uh, we was at 26, but let's go to verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man. He was a man of eloquence and mighty in the scripture, came to Ephesus. This was this man was instructed in the ways of the Lord. And being fervent in spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto themselves, and expound to him to God a more excellent way. So here, uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't Paul. It was it was Apollos. 
Wow, I really messed that up. <laughs> but it was Apollos. But I want you to listen to this. He had to be a great teacher because he was teaching in the synagogue. And so that means that he had what? Some credentials. That also means that he wasn't a novice. Listen to what it says. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the sin of God. Whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard him. They took him unto them. And expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Archaea. The brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. Whom when he had come. Helped them much. Which had. Believe through grace. I think that's powerful. And I think that it shows an example of how we in the body of Christ should help each other. One person don't have it all. And so it goes back um, to my point. Attitude. What is your attitude like in ministry? Well, let, let's not talk about ministry. What is your attitude like at home? Huh? What kind of attitude do you have at home? Let's not even talk about ministry. Let's talk about work. When you go to work where someone else is paying you, what kind of disposition or what kind of attitude do you have? Then it talks about respect. Because you have respect for a person doesn't mean that your attitude is correct. I respect my mama, but it was time I got mad at her. I respect my grandmother, but it was time when I said I wish lightning would strike her. I literally said that after I got a, whoop, a whooping. <laughs> I would do something dumb at school. I would, I, 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 my, 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 Michelle, you can't sit in the back. Like Prophet has said, you've been here four weeks. Jackie handed Michelle a handout. See how you got to think as a leader? See, see how you got to think? You got, you, you got to be on it. Watch this. So go to page 10. That's next to the last page. So your attitude and respect, you got to have that. But watch this. Not only do you have to have it in order to get it, you got to give it. That's right. How do you want, how should people respect you if you don't respect them? And a lot of times you can say you respect somebody, but your attitude shows something different. Amen. Am I right, Pastor Katrina? Yes, Come on up here. Get your mic. <laughs> say accountability. 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 Are you accountable? Are you accountable? Do you have accountability? I want you to I want you to come and tell me, turn the mic on, make sure the mic is on. Amen. What do you think about accountability, Sam? I believe everybody is accountable first to God and to ourselves, especially um, children of God. Because if you are not accountable to somebody or you don't find somebody to be accountable to, the enemy will trick you, make you think you're okay. And then you will do stuff or you will struggle. Um, you keep falling back into that same struggle because you are not accountable to anybody. Nobody's watching over you. Nobody's correcting you. Nobody's telling you the truth to your face. Because you have to have somebody that will tell you the truth. That's why who you think you are. That will tell you the truth. That will keep you going on the right path. Everybody has to be accountable. Amen. Amen. Now, let me talk about tardiness. One thing I can say about the leaders in this house, they're never late. 
The leaders in this house, they're never late. They're always on time. And, 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 and they treat the house of God like it's theirs. You, you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So, so now, now watch now. Make, get, make sure you're on it now. You got to be on it. You got to be on it. You got to be on it. Now watch this. Those of you that just came in, we're going to give you a handout. And I want you to turn to the next to the last page. That's page 10. I want you to turn to page 10. And, 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 and what I want you to do, remember I said, the leaders here, they're never late. They're always on time. For, for, since we've been in this building, that's one thing I can say. The leaders have always been on time. I can say, th I can say this. When you look at pit number 10, we're on, we're on uh, accountability. You see that, everyone? Page 10. So we're dealing with attitude. Page 10, author. Respect and accountability. Why are you sitting all the way back there in that last row by yourself? No particular reason. It was stuck on the other chairs. Okay. Now watch this. In 2015, start working on your attitude. And then begin to be aware of people that are around you and their attitude because they can corrupt you. Respect. You can't get respect if you're not given respect. And I'm going to say this again for those of you that wasn't here. Because a person say they respect you, their actions determines if they respect you. Because if their attitude and their action is different from the respect level that they say they have for you, they don't respect you. And that's going to create a problem because sooner or later, you're going to begin to feel frustrated in your spirit over that. Tardiness. One thing I can say, that the leaders here are accountable. I'm not the... I'm the easiest man to get along with, but when it comes to the service, I'm difficult. Why? Because I'm building a ministry. I'm birthing a ministry. And I want everything to be right. And you got to understand the same thing. If you get a house, you give a woman a house, she want everything in that house right. Mm -hmm. You give a man of God a house, he want everything in the house right. You give a woman a car, she want it right. She want the right color. Uh, I want taupe inside. I want tinted windows. Come on. It's the same thing in the house of God. Mm -hmm. This is why a lot of people that deal with leaders are frustrated with leaders because when it comes to the service, their temperament is different. You think Bishop Jake's is just sitting there. Mr. Jack just ain't sitting there. Just because he has demeanor or eloquence on the stage, close them doors. You run it, cost you thirty thousand dollars to open the building, and you gonna tell me that his leaders don't have accountability? What about Dr. Haynes over in there? You want to tell me his leaders don't have accountability? Let's look at Miles Monroe. Let's look at T let's look at Bishop Blake. These men have accountability and they have leaders that are not weak. You can't be a leader and be weak and try to go call yourself a Fortune 500 company. You'll never last. You got to have some backbone, even as a woman, because men in corporate America will run over women. And just because there's a women's movement or a feminine movement, look at the dollar bill. Women make 35% less than men. Say leadership. leadership. Say God. God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Make me the right type of leader. Make me the right type of leader. I want everyone to turn to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. 
When you look at Acts chapter 26, this is the story of Apollos preaching in the synagogue. And chapter 18, verse 26. I'm sorry. Chapter 18, verse 26. And what happens is Apollo is preaching in the synagogue. The fact that he's preaching in the synagogue lets you know that he's qualified by the Jewish tradition to be a teacher. But Priscilla and Aquila hears him, pulls him to the side, and expounds to him a more perfect way. That word perfect means to mature. It's also found in the book of Ephesians when it says, when we come into the unity of the faith, into a perfect man. It means maturity. And so just because you are a leader, it doesn't mean that you are mature. When people are watching you at work, they're watching your attitude. They're watching your respect. They're watching if you're the type of person that are all you're always late, something's wrong. You got you need to be fired. You don't need a job. Because look at it like this. If God was late, where would you be? Look at your neighbor and say, how many of you ever worked in sales? Raise your hand. You ever worked in sales? Okay. How many of you ever worked on commission? Look at your neighbor and say, all you need is one client. All you need is one client. Watch this now. God is your greatest client. How you going to be late for God? How you going to disrespect God? God asks you to do four things. The apostles were assigned to do four things. Fast, pray, study the word, and walk in obedience. He said, God didn't call us to wait on tables. But he called us to fast, and to pray, to study the word, and walk in obedience. Why? Because if I fast, I'm going to deny my body. I'm going to deny my flesh. If I pray... I'm going to hear, I'm going to learn how to train my ears to hear the voice of God. And if I am obedient, I'm able, and I walk in obedient, I'm able to hear the voice of God because I'm walking in obedience. Fast, pray, study the word, because the word is going to show you the path. And because of those three things, I can walk in obedience. A lot of people miss God because they don't fast, pray, or study the word. Watch this. I study the word at least one hour on Thursday. The reason I say one hour, because this is the fifth time I'm teaching this book since 1997. This is the fifth time. I know the book. School of Prophets too. Now, if I study on Sunday, I watch Prophetess on the Tuesday night call. How many of you ever been on Tuesday night call? No, sometimes you study five hours for a one hour call. Five hours. So if that's five hours, five times 52 is what? It's about over 500 hours, am I right? So in one year, on Tuesday night, she got 500 hours worth of studying. On Sunday morning, with figure like this. Three hours to four hours to prepare for a Sunday morning. Four down for 52 weeks is what? That means that every Saturday night, besides prayer during the week, there's at least four hours, that's eight hours between the both of us, that we've given God. So I already got 26, 27, 3,000 hours in for the year. How many you got? You understand what I'm saying? You see, and see, we wonder why some pastors progress and some don't. We wonder about why some Christians possess a, a progress and some don't, because you don't get no time to God. You got one client in life, and that's God. If you would serve Him, if you would honor Him, if you would pray, if you would fast, if you would read the Word and walk in obedience, you wouldn't even need a prophet. You ain't heard nothing I said. That's good. You ain't heard nothing I said. You ain't, that's why you don't even see prophets in the New Testament as the primary voice of God prophesying to the people. You see the apostles teaching the people. 
I've been walking in this office 19 years as an apostle. I didn't just start. I ain't no Facebook apostle. I, I, I don't have no 10, 15 churches. It ain't even about that. The apostle is a teacher. And if an apostle can't teach, he ain't an apostle. If an apostle don't have a prayer ministry, if prayer isn't the focus in an apostolic ministry, he ain't an apostle. She ain't an apostle either. There's a certain guideline that you got to look at your life. Listen, you wouldn't date anybody. Why would you listen to anybody's word? You wouldn't go out with any old man. Stopping at the gas station, putting the gas in. Hey, baby, you look good. Come on, let me take you out. All right, come on. Then you just as silly as he is. The Bible says silly, silly women, am I right? Yes. Come on in, but there's some silly men. Men are silly too. How many of you ever met one? You met yourself. <laughs> Ain't personal. Jesus met Judas, didn't he? What was Judas? Come on, let's get into some revelation. What was Judas? Anybody? Betrayer. A betrayer. So who did he meet? Himself. He met himself. Oh, you don't believe that, right? All right, let me show it to you in the scripture. Let me show it to you in the scripture. Turn to the book of Colossians. Say, show me, apostle. Show me, apostle. Show me, say, show me that revelation. Show me that revelation. I'm going to show you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you Turn to the book I say Colossi mm -hmm. Go to Colossi Chapter 15 Chapter Chapter 1 Chapter 1 Colossi Chapter 1 You got it? Mm -hmm. Who's a good reader? Chapter Start at verse 15 Read Who is the Go here babe Go here who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Wait a minute. First of all, he's the first what? First firstborn of every creature. Okay, that's the first thing. Read. For by him were all things created. Wait, 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 wait. What did he say? By him what? Say, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Come on, y'all got it. Come on, you know you done yelled at a man louder than that. The one in the red, I both got out of the seat. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So read that part again. For by him were all things created. Say all. All. All what? Things. Was what? Created. Say it again. Created. Created by who? By him. So who was Jesus, who was Judas created by? Huh? I can't hear you. God. You know how Bernie Mac did. Uh -huh. <laughs> now I ain't talking about Mr. 3000. Come on here now. God. Let's be real with this. It said that all things were created by him and what? For, For him. him. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So why was Judas created? For him. For him. What was Judas' purpose? To betray to him. Betray him. Right. So listen to what Jesus said. He said, no man. Take my life. That's why he laid it down. I lay it down. But it was a principle or a pattern of how that life was laid down. He met a betrayer, and the betrayer he loved yeah. because he could betray him with a kiss. That's it. That's it. So, so I'm gonna ask that question again. How many of you ever met somebody that told the truth? Met yourself. Met yourself. Amen. Amen. How many of you ever met a thief? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then somewhere in your life you took something that something wasn't somebody yeah. else. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so that means you, you may not even be aware of it. <laughs> Come on here now. A spirit can only enter if it has a door. That's right. Hello? Quiet now. <laughs> oh, get your mic. Get your mic. Get your mic. We on camera. Come on. Come on. We professional here. 
You ever seen that movie, I'm a professional, then Denzel Washington shooting? Go ahead, speak in the mic. That goes to show the power of words when you say that you only meet yourself and then you say, you realize that somewhere in your life you have planted seeds with your words because words are seeds. And the way that the word grow is the attention that you give that seed. And the more you give that word that you release attention that is going to, meaning attention means meditate. If you meditate on what you're saying, then you, you will manifest that. That's why it's when he says that uh, if you met a liar, somewhere you have planted the seed within yourself that there's a liar. For women that deal with men that betray them, where somewhere in their life there was a spirit of fear that was released in them that someone's going to betray me. So now every man is a betrayer in your eyes and you begin to express that. That's the power of words and it's the power of meditation. That's why he says when it comes to his word that we're to meditate day and night. We're to meditate on that word day and night. And he got up because he, cause he, he got some. <laughs> Go ahead, prophet. <laughs> Go ahead, prophet. We're to meditate on that word day and night. Now, when he says day and night, meaning that you are to hold a word pertaining to what you're, if you're dealing with something specific, you find the word in the scripture that has to do with whatever situation you may be dealing with. Now how you meditate on that day and night is not that you just sit up all day and think about that. Right. Meditating on that day and night means that you speak it. And as you speak it, you see it. And as you begin to see it, you hold that thing, you capture that thing in your spirit. You capture the image of that thing. And you see yourself walking and manifesting in it. And then that's just an image that you hold within yourself. It's just like when you're in a dream and you're in your dream state. When you're in a dream, when you're in a dream, you're in a state where you're literally lying in the bed, but you see yourself performing different acts in your dream. That's a form of meditation. Uh, come on, bro. Which means that <laughs> you can meditate while you're awake and you can meditate while you sleep. Mm. It's all in the thought that you capture. You can hold on to a thought before you go to sleep. And while you're asleep, you will begin to, to manifest or think on that thought that you hold on to before you go to sleep. Anyway. I mean, that's powerful. I, I, I mean, that's powerful. And, and, and what she's saying is, okay, here's something in School of the Prophets. Repeat after me. God sets the stage. God sets the stage. For one to perform his life. For one to perform his life. To the best possible position. To the best possible position. So you have to determine whether the stage is up on your life, whether the curtain is up on your life, or the curtain is down. If the curtain is down, that means that you're in what? Dress rehearsal. But if the curtain is up, that means that everything in your life is going to be exposed. Mm -hmm. Your flaws going to be exposed. Your excellence is going to be exposed. And how many times have you been to a boss or worked on a job, they sit down with you to interview you or give you a evaluation, and the first thing they talk about is your strengths. They pick you up, am I right? But then they say, but. And when you walk away from the table, you ain't upset. Why? Because they gave you balance. They told you where your weak point, where your strong points were, and then they also showed you your weakness. You looked at them, you thought about them, and then he went home, you stayed at work, and when you went to work, and when you went back to work, you worked on those what? Weak points. Mm -hmm. That's what evaluation is about. Right. Amen. Amen. I I I mean, um, I'll believe the camera there. Come here for a second. Um, and what I want you to see here, hand me those pamphlets down there. No, no, no. Those, the, the, right there. Hand me that. 
and uh, just give them to me. And I want you to do something for me. Put this in. That one right there. Put that in. Pam, come here. Charity, come here. Hand those out. Just give them the top page. Don't give them the second page. Give me, give me one of those. Man. Give me another one. Don't give them the second page. Just give them the top page. No, that, uh, that one. Just give us that one. Oh. That one right there. Oh, no, this one. This one. Uh huh. Just give me that. Pastor Petrina. Yes, sir. Here, honey. Pat Prophets. Give that to Prophet. Yeah. Pass those out. Make sure everybody gets one. We're getting ready to move into School of the Prophets, amen. Yeah. But what I wanted to deal with was leadership. Go ahead and cut that off for a minute. Yeah. <clears throat> but what I wanted to deal with was leadership. Because I want you to see how important your attitude is. And I want you to take this home. Huh? Yeah. Yes, you do. Everybody got the same page. Everybody have this page, right? We're all on the same page. Okay. But let's recap this. I want you to study Acts chapter 18, verse 26. Read the whole thought. Read the whole thought. And then you want to look at your attitude. Is your attitude excellent? Good? Fair? Does it need improvement? Improvement? You see that song, My Heart Will Sing? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And then, same thing with respect. Same thing with accountability. Same thing with tardiness. Same thing with prayer. You have to look at yourself. Now, at the bottom of this, it says 15 laws of success. You know where that comes from? How many of you ever heard of Napoleon Hill? Napoleon Hill did a study of the most successful men in the world. It's a book about this thick. It's about 600 pages. I took this particular part from that. What's wrong, Al? Cut the video off. So what I want you to see here is that these are things that we can work on. Amen? So all we want to do is just...